Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to kick off the spectra topic by looking at the Bohr model of the atom. So let's get started. Now we'll start off the second half of the particles and waves topic by looking at spectra and in this video we're going to look at the Bohr model of the atom. So it starts by saying that in 1913 Niels Bohr proposed a new model of the atom to describe the arrangement of electrons within it. The model includes the following features. So here's a big list of features for the Bohr model of the atom that are useful to know for the exam. So firstly electrons are in circular orbits around the nucleus. Electron orbits correspond to energy levels. And electrons can only occupy certain energy levels, i.e. we say that the energy of the electrons is quantized. It then says electrons in the lowest energy orbit are said to be in the ground state. And electrons can gain energy to move to higher energy levels, which are called excited states, or lose energy to drop down energy levels. And we say when an electron is completely removed from an atom, it is said to be ionized. Then an electron in the ionized state is defined as having zero potential energy, and lastly all energy levels within an atom have negative values. So these are all important features of the Bohr model that are helpful to know for the exam, but if you think you'll struggle to remember all of these, then I would try and just pick out two or three that you think you would remember. And how would we draw the Bohr model of the atom? Well, we could represent it with something like this, where we've got a nucleus appearing as a dot in the middle, and we've then got these circular electron orbits around the nucleus, and we've then got different states which are labelled here. So the first circular orbit nearest the nucleus is called the ground state, and that can be labelled as E0, and then we have various excited states here labelled E1, E2, and E3, and these are the circular electron orbits beyond the ground state. Now it's worth pointing out that you can get more or fewer than three excited states, but three are shown here just as an example. So in the features of the Bohr model, we said that electrons can be excited from one energy level to a higher energy level, so that means an electron in say E1 could be excited to E2 or E3, or electrons could lose energy and drop down an energy level. And remember we said in the features of the Bohr model that the energy of the electrons is quantized, which basically just means that the electrons can only occupy these certain energy levels. Electrons cannot exist in between these energy levels. Now we can take our diagram of the Bohr model with circular orbits and change it into an easier form to see how electrons will move between the energy levels. And we do that by using straight lines instead of circular orbits. So it says in order to study the movement of electrons between energy levels in the atom, it is useful to consider what we call an energy level diagram, as shown below. So taking these circular orbits here, we can draw them as straight lines instead. And doing that gives us something like this. So here we've got our ground state, E0 at the bottom. We've then got our excited states E1, E2 and E3 and then we've got this dashed line showing the ionization level which is where the energy will equal zero joules. And remember because we define the ionization level to be at zero joules then all of these smaller energy levels must be below zero joules i.e. negative values of energy. You might also notice the different gap sizes between the different energy levels and that's pretty common to see in questions. And on the left this arrow shows that we have less energy going down the way i.e. the energy levels get more negative as you go down the way. It then says electrons can exist either in the ground state, which is the orbit closest to the nucleus, or in various excited states, which correspond to orbits further away from the nucleus. And lastly it says an electron will reach zero joules of potential energy at an infinite distance from the nucleus of the atom. This means that an electron which is trapped in the atom has less energy than zero joules, and so it must have a negative value of energy. And that's what we said earlier about these energy levels below the ionization level having an energy value less than zero joules. And it's also worth thinking about the values that these energy levels can take below the ionization level. So obviously we said the ionization level is at zero joules, and just to give you an idea of the differences between these energy levels, remember E0 is the ground state and that will be the energy level closest to the nucleus. So we would say that this ground state would have a large negative value. And as we go up the energy levels, the value would become a smaller negative value i.e. it would become more positive or less negative. So that's going in the opposite direction to this arrow. And a good way to think about this is in terms of potential energy between the negatively charged electrons occupying the energy levels and the positively charged nucleus of the atom. So if we think about it, the negatively charged electrons in the ground state will be closest to the positively charged nucleus and therefore they are close to where they want to be. They are going to be attracted to that positively charged nucleus. So there's not going to be as much electrostatic potential energy between those negatively charged electrons in the ground state and the positively charged nucleus. However, if you have electrons in a higher energy level, say an E1, then these electrons would have a greater potential energy and therefore the electrons are further away from the nucleus which is where they want to be because they're attracted. And the same applies if you've got electrons in energy level E2 or E3. So electrons in E2 would have a greater potential than those in E1 and E0 
and electrons in E3 would have a greater potential than all of these. And that's because the electrons are further away from the positively charged nucleus. Now just before we stop, I'll show you a quick simulation to help you visualise the energy input. So if we have a look at this simulation here, it says the energy levels which can be occupied by electrons can be represented by horizontal lines. So these are some energy levels shown here. It then says electrons in the lowest energy level are in the ground state. So let's say we represented our electron as red here, that would be in the ground state right now in the lowest energy level. It then says energy may be input to the electron in the ground state and it may rise to an excited state. So if the electron in the ground state gains energy, then it will move to the excited state. You can then keep inputting energy in order to raise the electron to a higher energy level. So it says it is possible to excite an electron into higher energy levels by an input of more energy. And eventually it says that if sufficient energy is added, if you keep putting in energy there, the electron may be ejected from the atom the atom becomes ionised. When no longer under the influence of protons in the nucleus of the atom, the electron may have kinetic energy. The energy level at which an electron is only just ejected with zero kinetic energy is called the ionisation level, and is defined as the level at which the electron has zero potential energy. And that's what we've already seen from the features of the Bohr model. It then says one implication of this definition of the zero energy level is that energy levels below the ionisation level must be negative. Energy is added to raise the energy level to zero. Again, that's something we've already seen. And lastly, it says some of the values of the energy levels for the hydrogen atom are shown. So these are just some typical examples of energy levels to give you an idea. So there we've got a large negative number, minus 21.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules for the ground state. And then you'll notice the value in front of the scientific notation gets more positive, i.e. less negative as you move up. So we have minus 5.4, then minus 2.42, minus 1.36 and so on up to zero joules. And notice how these all have values of times 10 to the minus 19 joules, which are typical electron energies. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.